In this video, I'm going to show you how you can start a £10,000 per month personal training business from scratch. If you're passionate about fitness and you want to turn your passion into a profession, starting a personal training business can be one of the best decisions of your life, only if it's done right. At the end of this video, I'm going to show you how to get your very first client. So the first step of starting your personal training business is you actually have to get qualified. You have to get qualified by a recognised body inside your city, country, qualifies you to actually personal train people. Now this is the same for online coaching as well, you have to get qualified. There's so many people just slapping online coach in their Instagram bio or on a website when they're actually not qualified. Do some research, speak to some personal trainers in your gym or personal trainers that you know. Ask them where they got qualified. Ask them how it was, how is the experience, because it's a lot of money to part with. Most training providers allow you to do blended options where you can do it online, you can do it part-time, full-time. Personally, I did it for six weeks full-time. I just took holidays off work, my other job that I had, and I just went full on with it. I'd recommend if you can, do that. If not, do a blended option. Don't let it drag out. The two providers that I would recommend is the fitness group. They're Glasgow based, but they help people all across the UK and they're really, really well known. The other one is Pegasus. That's who I went through from uh, to qualify as well many, many years ago. But those two are the two standouts I would say in Scotland. But like I say, they serve people all across the UK. The next step is to build a business plan and not in the traditional sense. What I mean by that is one of the things that I used to get asked from gym managers, well-meaning gym managers in the gym that I worked with, what's your business plan? It never really set well with me business plans because number one, I wasn't sure that that's what I wanted to do. I just thought, I just want to help people. When in reality, you do have to run a business. That's why we're doing this video today. Develop a business plan, but not in the old fashioned sense. You might have heard the term business plan before when people talk about where they're setting up, you know, how many customers they need, where they're going to operate out of. Is it service based? Is it product based? All that kind of stuff. But you have to develop some sort of business plan, but not in that sense. What you have to do is look at, okay, where am I going to operate out of? Which we'll cover in a second. What am I going to offer? What's it going to look like? What is an ideal situation look like? How much money do I have to make? How much profit do I have to make? Do some number crunching and if you're fully employed just now looking to get into a fitness business then what you can do is look at your current wage and then look at replacing that and then just look at the product that you're selling and how many of them you have to sell to replace that wage. And I'll cover that a bit more in detail in a second, but develop a business plan. You're not going to have full clarity on what that could look like, but just get some notes down, brainstorm a little bit, understand that, okay, I'm not just going to be going from loving the gym to all of a sudden a really qualified personal trainer where you're going to get hundreds of clients. It's a business at the end of the day. In fact, it's a business at the start of the day and the end of the day. The next step is to set up your business. So you're going to want to register yourself on HMRC or wherever you're watching this from. Register your business, start up a bank account, register to that business. I really like Starling Bank. It's really, really simple. It's an online bank and it's, it's very, very clear. You can run your taxes through there. You can manage your expenses really, really well. I'd recommend that. You can also use Monzo, things like that. But set up your bank account so that you can actually get paid. The next thing you're going to want to do is actually pick a gym. So if you're going to be a personal trainer, pick a gym, identify a gym. If you're going to be online coaching, then it's separate. But if you're going to be a personal trainer, then you need to identify where you could potentially work and coach people from. The biggest thing I can recommend here is just go on Google Maps, look at where you stay, where you want to coach from. If you don't want to do it in your city and you want to branch out a little bit, fine. But look in Google Maps, zoom in, type in gyms, have a look at them. You get commercial gyms, where as you'll know, it's the budget gyms with thousands of members. Then you have independent gyms, which is kind of privately owned. And then and then you kind of have like health centers like David Lloyd and places like that. Now they've all got their pros and cons. I personally started out in a commercial gym. I started out in pure gym. The pros to that is that there's loads of members, loads of conversations can happen. You can help loads of people. The cons to that, if you want to call it cons, is that there's a lot more trainers there. So there's a lot more competition around about you to get clients. For independent gyms, you'll have probably a bit more flexibility in terms of agreements and what you can work and you know how much it's going to be. The downfall is that you're probably not going to have the footfall that a budget gym would have. And lastly, though, kind of health clubs like David Lloyd, Nuffield, things like that. The pros to that is that it's higher end clients, potentially people who go there who can afford that expensive gym membership. So in theory, they could afford more expensive personal training. The cons are that you're not going to be sitting by a lot of PTs. They don't have really good options in terms of running your business there. In fact, it's probably one of the worst, whereas they hire you, they take a cut of your uh, individual personal training hours. And you'll probably hear two terms when you approach these gyms, it will be shifts and rent. Rent basically just means that you go in there and you pay a set fee where you rent the space to coach your clients from. They don't touch your income, they don't deal with your business, you just pay them rent to be there. Now the pros to that is that you get left alone, you can operate, you can go market your service. The cons are that you maybe don't get to do any classes and meet people and build up rapport with people. And then the opposite of that is shift work, where you go in, you do some shifts, it's maybe cleaning in the gym, you run some classes there, you help around with the members, doing inductions and things like that. The pros to that is that you get to meet people. 
and you can fill up your diary a lot faster. Of course, the cons are that you're then working for someone, doing time for them when you could be making money. And then more recently, gyms have started to do like a little bit of a half and half where you do some rent, you do some shift work. And again, this all really depends on you. It depends on the level of how fast you want to get to where you want to get to. Um, some people like to just dive straight in and go on rent and pay the money so they can pick up clients. If you're not great on social media and not great at marketing, you probably want to stick around for the next video that's coming. But if you're not, then you maybe rely on your people skills, which is being in the gym, speaking to people. So to sum all that up, just pick a gym, pick a situation and an agreement that's going to suit you, suit your style of coaching and the type of people that you want to help. Next one is utilize social media and build your authority. Now, if you want to be a personal trainer and your gym is the best place to start, the advertising of speaking to people, chatting to people, spotting people in the gym, offering help, offering assistance, being in the classes, that is always going to build your authority a lot quicker than social media would. However, in today's world, you need to have both. Okay, so a lot of coaches put emphasis on uh, social media too much when they're actually in person meeting people. You have to nail down being in person with people. It's the easiest way to sell people. It's the easiest way to build rapport. However, in today's world, like restaurants and stuff, if you want to check out a restaurant, the first place you go is usually social media to see what it's like, to see pictures and things like that. It's the same with any business. So you might get someone who's building rapport in person in the gym, then they'll go and check out your social media. Okay, so you kind of want to have both of them in a very good place. And on top of that, if you're in the gym, speak to every single member, introduce yourself, let them know who you are, let them know what you're all about. And if they, if they need any help, come and see you. The next one's quite specific, but I speak to coaches all the time with this. It's decide on a leaving date and the income that you need to leave your other job. So if you're thinking about starting a fitness business, then potentially you might already be in another job or an employment. You then have to think about the security going forward. So you're probably worried. That's probably your biggest thing. It's like, okay, I want to chase my passion, but at the same time, I need to pay the bills. I need to pay my mortgage, keep the kids going, all that sort of stuff. Get it, it can be daunting. I was in that exact position. So you then have to think about, okay, what's the date where I have to absolutely hand my notice into work? And what does that look like in terms of income for the business? So I mentioned earlier on, do, you know, let's say you get paid £2,000 a month from your current job. How do we replace that by getting £2,000 in your fitness business? What product is going to get us there with the least amount of clients? So let's say, for example, £200 per client, 10 of those clients paying you £200, that's £2,000. That should replace your old job. And it's crazy to think that 10, 10 clients doing two, two sessions a week, that'll be 20 hours in the gym floor. So you'll replace probably your full-time job with 20 hours in the gym floor. That just goes to show you how lucrative this can be if you get it right. Second last one is begin selling to people. Begin outreaching, like I said, speak to people on the gym floor, but also introduce yourself on social media. If someone follows your business page or engages with you, introduce yourself. Don't start the start of a, some Mexican standoff, okay? Reach out to people, say, hey, thanks very much for the, the follow. Just to let you know, I've got a bunch of resources for um, females who are looking to increase their health and fitness in 2023. Just let me know if you would like any of them sent over. Have a great day. Nice so soft outreach, just letting them know that you're there. Okay, don't start to think like other personal trainers who are too shy, they think it's salesy. Can you imagine walking into a shop and the person just kept their head down until you spoke to them, the person that owned the shop? You'd feel it's quite rude, wouldn't you? Well, in today's virtual, very virtual driven world, that's the equivalent, so you need to introduce yourself. But also, if people are liking your stuff and commenting on it, thank them for it. Of engaging with your stuff, thank them and introduce yourself. And the sort of second part of that is showing them your offer, Give, telling them what you're all about. And remember in the previous video, we spoke about building an irresistible offer that kept you up at night. That's the one you're going to tell them about. And lastly, continually educate yourself for the next two to three years at least. Now, this is one of the biggest problems that I certainly felt it for three years. I spent thousands of pounds on my qualification. I qualified, had a second job, and then I finally left the second job and I felt, do you know what? I'm actually just paying off that £3,000 course that I paid. There's nobody else getting my money until I build my savings up. And it was actually the, one of my biggest downfalls because, because for three years I was playing the guessing game. I never knew what to do. I was watching other PTs and getting left, like led astray. And it was frustrating and it led to burnout, which I talk about a lot in, in my book that's coming out. So as soon as you make the money, reinvest it back into the business and your self-development and knowledge because it's going to remove years of guesswork. Look, we know we spoke about the £2,000 that might mean a lot to replace your current wage. That's fine. Get that income. Get yourself sorted. Pay off your qualification, which by the way isn't £3,000 anymore. It was back then. Pay off the qualification. Get yourself supported and then look for help. Look at people who are ahead of you who are doing the things that you want to do. Ask them stuff. Pay them money to get the advice so that you can reduce your, the guesswork by years. Videos like this will just not available when I was a personal trainer. So to end, if you're looking to grow your fitness business, this list that I've mentioned should absolutely help. I hope you've taken loads of notes. You're probably going to have to go back over this with a pen and paper to make sure you've got it all listed out and just take it step by step. 
And if you need any more advice, me or my team, there'll be a link below where you can grab a call, speak to one of us. We're actually looking for new success stories to join our thriving fitness business community. So click the link below, book a call with me or one of my team, and we'll be happy to chat about how we can grow your fitness business in 2023 to 10K months and beyond. Speak soon.